Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we've got another ship comparison video for you. This one we decided to do because it's timely. If you've been watching the news, then you've no doubt heard that they just discovered the wreck of the USS Samuel B. Roberts, a destroyer escort lost during the Battle of Samar. She is uh, one of the most famous tin cans to come out of World War II and earned the nickname, the destroyer that fought like a battleship. So uh, we're gonna compare her to Battleship New Jersey to see just how outclassed by a true battleship she should have been on paper. In practice, Samuel B. Roberts was one of the ships of Taffy 3. It was a force made up of six escort carriers, about 10,000 tons each carrying about 30 aircraft to support the invasion of the Philippines, uh, which was escorted by three Fletcher-class destroyers and four even smaller destroyer escorts. On the morning of October 25th, the Japanese fleet, the center force under Admiral Kurita, led by the battleship Yamato, came over the horizon uh, off of the island of Samar near the Leyte invasion beaches. The ships of Taffy 3 were the only ships there because Admiral Halsey's third fleet, including the battleship New Jersey, his flagship, had been drawn away by a force of Japanese aircraft carriers far to the north. Uh, instead of protecting the San Bernardino Strait, which would have given battleship New Jersey her chance to fight Yamato, uh, battleship New Jersey was nowhere nearby, and instead it fell to a couple of tin cans to hold the line. So, uh, Samuel B. Roberts, or our escort, that's more or less the biggest and most advanced type of destroyer escort during World War II, which is not saying much at all. She only weighed 1,350 tons fully loaded, or just a little over half of the weight of a 16-inch gun turret on Battleship New Jersey. At 306 feet long, 36 feet wide, and only 9 foot deep, this ship is barely a third of the length, width, and draft of an Iowa-class battleship. This ship is small. The main battery is two single mount 5 inch 38 caliber guns. So, a single 5 inch gun on Battleship New Jersey has the same firepower as Destroyer Escort and more than twice as much armor plating. Additionally, they had uh, four 40 millimeter guns and two twin mounts and 10 20 millimeter anti-aircraft guns. And for just in case they bit off more than they could chew, they had three 21 inch torpedo tubes. Realistically, their main battery fell in the two depth charge tracks, eight depth charge throwers, and Hedgehog anti-submarine weapon uh, that they carried to protect the escort carriers from Japanese I-boats. Now, uh, as it turns out, those weapons did not come in handy at all. The major weight saving in a destroyer escort from a full-sized fleet destroyer uh, came in the propulsion plant. With only 12,000 shaft horsepower, uh, she was designed to reach a top speed of about 24 knots. A little bit faster than older destroyer escorts, which only had to go faster than the merchant ships they were escorting and the submerged submarines they were expected to fight. As it turns out, during the battle, the crew was able to get the ship up to a top speed of just over 28 knots. So just like Battleship New Jersey's crew was able to push her to the highest speed of any of the battleships, Samuel B. Roberts probably attained the highest speed of any of the World War II era destroyer escorts. Uh, and I would have gotten up to that speed too if Yamato was chasing me at 27 knots. The thing was, Samuel B. Roberts wasn't running away from Yamato. Admiral Sprague ordered all of the planes of Taffy 3 to attack the Japanese force with whatever weapons they had. They were mostly armed for shore bombardment. Uh, and he ordered the destroyers to charge in. Lieutenant Commander Bob Copeland, the commanding officer of Samuel B. Roberts, asked for clarification if that meant 
the full-size destroyers or all of the destroyers and destroyer escorts and was told uh, just the three full-size destroyers. And he charged in anyway, leaving three destroyer escorts to protect the carriers and joining the three destroyers that were attacking the Japanese fleet. So he then gets into a torpedo and gun fight. They launch torpedo and gunnery attacks on the Japanese 15,000 ton heavy cruiser Chokai uh, and land some torpedo and gun hits that lead to that ship sinking, among other damage uh, sustained from the other American units. They then transfer fire to the cruiser Chikuma and set the ship's bridge on fire. So in addition to holding off Japanese battleships, she's also doing significant damage to the Japanese cruiser force off San Bernardino Strait. After about 90 minutes of combat, she does take uh, enemy hits that cause damage. After about two hours, one of the Japanese battleships, Congo, finally lands three 14-inch shells on one of the ship's engine rooms, opening up a hole 40 feet wide and 10 feet high. Uh, this will eventually lead to the sinking of the ship within about a half hour, along with 90 of her about 215 crew. Unfortunately, the battle off Samar was not just a surface fight, it was also the first use of kamikazes. So after uh, surviving the Japanese surface ships, which did face so much aggression from the American destroyers that they thought they were facing American cruisers and battleships and turned around and left, uh, then the Japanese Navy sent kamikazes in to finish off the American ships. This led to the crew of Samuel B. Roberts being left in the water for some 50 hours before American vessels were able to come back and rescue them. So, um, any way you look at it, size, combat ability, uh, destructive power, Samuel B. Roberts does not compare to an Iowa-class battleship at all. Not, not speed, not endurance, uh, nothing. The only place where this ship excels is that it took less than six months to build the ship from December 43 until April of 44. Uh, the ship is under construction and uh, goes into commission. So it took no time at all to build the ship. It took virtually no uh, resources for the wartime economy, especially compared to a 57,000 ton gold plated behemoth like New Jersey. Uh, so this ship was able to be rushed out into the fight along with literally hundreds of sister destroyer escorts that were able to not only turn the tide in the Battle of the Atlantic, but also contribute to the Pacific War. Samuel B. Roberts only earned one battle star in her short career, from April to October of 1944, uh, and that was for the action off Samar. She also earned a presidential unit citation for that action. Uh, and so in terms of bang for your buck, Samuel B. Roberts punches way above her weight class uh, and is easily worth an Iowa-class battleship. The cool thing about the wreck of the Samuel B. Roberts, in addition to just finding it, is that she is the deepest wreck that has ever been discovered. Now, since it was a private individual that uh, discovered the wreck of Samuel B. Roberts, we're, we're not going to post any of the pictures or video from that. Uh, I have been told that they are sharing all their findings with Naval History and Heritage Command's underwater archaeology lab, which also helped uh, with deck logs and things like that to help find the ship. So hopefully in the next couple of months to years, the uh, information from the wreck will come out uh, based on the Navy's research and, and this information that, that we've found. Um, so I, I look forward to posting updates in the future with more information we've discovered. From what I've heard, the uh, ship hit the seabed with enough force that crumpled the bow and broke the already weakened stern off where those 14-inch shell hits had been. Uh, so the ship was in a couple of pieces. The torpedo tubes uh, were found separate from the shipwreck, which is kind of common to find uh, things like that fall off and in the debris field. Uh, so it'll be interesting to find out what other information comes out of uh, exploring the wreck site. Samuel B. Roberts uh, was, of course, just the first of three ships so far to carry that name. 
with a uh, second Samuel B. Roberts being commissioned as a gearing class destroyer shortly after. Uh, the first Samuel B. Roberts goes down, that ship serves up until the 70s, and then a more modern Oliver Hazard Perry class frigate Samuel B. Roberts is placed in the commission. Uh, she also took a tremendous beating but managed to stay afloat and is currently in the Philadelphia Navy Yard. Uh, Battleship New Jersey staff were allowed to strip parts off of that Samuel B. Roberts to go into the maintenance of this ship, uh, preparatory to her being taken out for scrap probably in the next couple of years. You can't get on board uh, that Samuel B. Roberts, but if you come to the Philadelphia Navy Yard while you're in the area of visiting New Jersey, uh, you can at least see her and uh, many of her sister ships tied up there in mothballs. And so for those of you who have seen pictures of the wreck, uh, what do you think of the condition of it so far? It's amazing that the deeper down they go, the more intact they are because of the low oxygen environment. I grew up watching uh, documentaries on Titanic and Bismarck and, and on Titanic, you can just see the rust sickles hanging off of that ship. Uh, whereas you look at ships that have been discovered more recently in deep water, like Indianapolis, Johnson, and uh, Samuel B. Roberts, and their paint coatings are absolutely intact. It's incredible the condition these ships are down there. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support you guys have given us. And there's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating. You can also support the museum by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us. Thanks for watching.